one challenge that I find agents have when they're trying to do either for sale by owners, door knocking, any of the old school methods, right? Cold mm-hmm. calling, any of that, is that they find that it's a challenge because it does take a lot of calls to get that person to finally say, oh yeah, I, I want to listen a little bit more. And I think a lot of people are under the assumption that it's going to, it, it's easier for some people to find the right people over others. Um, they forget that it does require a lot of calls, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how do you make sure that at the very beginning of that conversation, you're going to have more success than someone who doesn't have your experience? Thanks, man. I appreciate you being on. All right. We're live into the Facebook community. Welcome, everybody. We've got two awesome people with us. Andrew from Red X. Look at his awesome background. Andrew, <laughs> Andrew is that a real background? or is This, that- is, this is a real background. I can uh, I can touch these little plants back here and, and move the books around. So Are the plants real? <laughs> the plants are not real. Okay, no. there you go. I knew something wasn't real there, dude. There you go. But the books are real and I read them every day. So... <laughs> And then we've got Andrew. Andrew, can you uh, tell us about Greg McDaniel? Because he's a good friend of both of ours, but you know he uses Red X on a consistent basis. Uh, I want to see what, what your intro is like. See if Greg likes it. Yeah. Oh, well, there's the real pressure. Um, so so <laughs> we, we, we have known Greg for a long time uh, here at Red X. He, he does a great job. Uh, he does weekly beers with calls, which is what we love. Uh, you know, Greg's weekly podcast. You may know him from Real Estate Uncensored that he's done in the past. Um, I don't know, Greg, do you still do that? Yeah. So we've been doing Real Estate Uncensored for the last six years. My good friend and business partner, Matt Johnson, and I uh, have been doing that. Uh, we're one of the top rated podcasts out there. And then with the beers and calls is when I... Um, Matt kind of talked me into getting going and he's like, dude, you should record some of your cold calls. I'm like, do you think anybody would listen? I said, I don't know. Let's figure it out. And so I recorded one um, and it was just me talking into a mic uh, before live, uh, live video. And, you know, it took off like wildfire and now this is what I'm doing again. And it's a blast, man, because the people energize me just as much as I energize them. And, you know, they give me the ability to be on point every single time I'm doing the calls. And yes, I'm going to admit it. I just want an excuse to drink a beer at 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, but you know what? It's one beer. It's not a whole 12 pack, just one beer. And uh, then I just go out and do, do the scripts and just see what I can do to get leads. So yeah, man. And, and Red X is fantastic. You guys' data is off, off, you know, off the record. I mean, it's incredible stuff. Your triple line dialer is just killer. So you guys have helped me make a lot of money and a lot of appointments. So I really appreciate Appreciate you. Appreciate Tristan. Pre- pre- appreciate Lab Coat and everybody else. Thanks, Greg. Awesome intro, by the way, Andrew. And good job, Greg, on what you're doing, man. Give him back. Thanks, brother. That is pretty sweet, bro. Let, let's dive into this for sale by owners. What we're hearing right now is it's a challenge to convert both for sale by owners and expireds. But tell me, are you having a challenge converting for sale by owners in the world that we're in right now? Or what? what are you hearing out there? Is this for me or Andrew? That's going to be for Andrew and then Greg. Greg, um, you're you're the pro at this from both of us. I want to see what Andrew says because he gets to hear it from everyone, right? So he gets to see the good, the bad. And then I want to see what you said, uh, Greg. Yeah. So as we've been interviewing a lot of like top performing agents and coaches on our, our podcast, the Red X podcast, um, a few things. Uh, one is that it's a crazy market, right? And I'm sure we're all we're all aware of that. And with that, um, with this this you know super hot market, I think a lot of uh, homeowners and 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 people who are selling their homes really feel empowered to sell it themselves, right? You have the common objection that I don't want to pay a commission, and where um, you know people have have more equity in their home in the last year than they have you know in in, in decades. Uh, they think, well, yeah, I'll just do it myself and I'll save that commission plus all this extra equity. So, so with for sale by owners, I mean, you know, fewer homes are expiring. And I think that kind of means more people are putting their homes on the market themselves. 
So that's what we've been hearing a lot of, um, you know, the objections are a little bit more solid that people get from for sale by owners. And a lot of people, I think I, I've heard a lot of people saying, yeah, that's all I'm working. Right. And a lot of people who are kind of backing off because they're timid about that empowerment that these for sale by owners have. So interesting. Greg, what about you, man? What are you seeing? So for sale by owners, for ramp by owners, you know, all these other categories that we can do calls into, um, it really comes down to be being very inquisitive in regards to what the end goal is for the homeowner. So instead of uh, being, well, let me rephrase that. What you need to do is you need to stay consistently inquisitive, always ask questions in regards to what the means to the end is. And so when you're talking to somebody, um, you know, and you, you, they say, well, I, I want to sell it myself. All right. Fantastic. Help me understand what that means for you. Why would you, I mean, are you familiar with the local documents? Are you familiar with the COVID documents? Do you have a full set of all the disclosures you're going to need? Do you understand how much that's going to cost you? In California, it's going to cost you $1,200 just for a full set of docs. Do you understand the loopholes, the pitfalls? I mean, have you understood what, if someone doesn't sign the COVID doc or the PED doc uh, to walk into your property, the lawsuits and the li liabilities you have to, that you're going to incur. Um, and a lot of the times people, what I'm doing when I'm asking these questions with these folks is I'm just trying to get them aware of what's going on so that when they have questions, they go, wow, this guy, this guy, McDaniel, Greg or Greg McDaniel, whoever this guy is. I mean, he, he brought up some good questions and I, I don't understand what I'm not, what I don't understand. And, uh, you know, Andrew and I were playing role play before this. And I always ask someone, you know, so Andrew, um, let me ask you a question. Um, you have, you're, you're full, you're fully full-time employed. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. I, I have a full-time job. Okay. Fantastic. That's exactly why I asked. I, I knew you would be, uh, do you want a second job right now? No, I don't have time for a second job. And that's exactly where you can go into a lot of questions uh, with, with the for sale by owners because they don't understand how much this actually takes time. Because, I mean, we're working days and nights. We're eating out of paper bags at our, at our desk. We're not eating caviar and champagne on our 1,000-foot yachts. You know, it, it's just not happening like that. So once you, under, once you help them understand this, um, from my point of view, my, where I'm sitting in the stands, uh, people just, they start seeing the light. And then at that point, when you, like Andrew, with you and Red X and everyone that's over at Lab Coat and everyone else who's, who's listening to this right now, you just have to literally give people an idea of how much that they are missing out on their own life, their own time. They're taking sick days. They're taking vacation days. They're taking the time away from their spouse or significant other, their kids to go show the house. They don't have the right paperwork. And, you're, and, you're, and I'm not saying that they're doing it wrong. I'm just asking them how they're handling the situation. And then, of course, it goes back down to when it comes to, you know, national stats. Last time I looked at NAR, um, uh, an individual who sells a house with a real estate agent makes 14 percent more than selling it themselves. So you ask them the question of. So, Andrew, let me ask you a question. What would be the net net out of the sale that you're looking for right now? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to make, uh, you know, eighty thousand dollars from from the sale. Okay. So we want to make $80,000. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. Okay. So if I can, sh if I can help you get that 80,000 and then I can tack on my commission on top of it and you still make your money, would that be an issue for you? No, I just don't really see how that's possible. Great. That's exactly why we should get together. Why don't we get together either today at three or tomorrow at four? What's better for you? Uh, today at three. All right. Fantastic. I'll bring the cookies and the coffee. Let's go. Wonderful. It's just, it, it's, it's helping them understand that you can, as a professional, I know this is cliche and we've all talked about it. Tristan, I know you, I know, you know, this line very well. Um, you know, it, when it comes to a heart surgery, do you want someone who's done it for one time or do you want someone who's done it a thousand times? How would you, I mean, how do you want to move forward on this? And it's about tonality and delivery uh, and a lot of other factors that I'm sure we'll get into right now. And I, I've talked enough and I'm, now I'm going to shut up. So I apologize. <laughs> no, dude, it's good. This is, <laughs> this is your show, Greg. Kathy has a question. Where can I see Greg's scripts and him calling? Uh, Kathy, thank you very, very much for asking. Uh, you can just go follow this ugly mug uh, on, on Facebook and I'll see a big old microphone stuck on my face. You can go there. You can watch me do my live and beers and calls there and my podcast and everything else. So very easy to find. If you have any questions, please DM me, everybody else who's, who's watching this. I'd love to answer 
asking me questions. I mean, just be an assistant to, uh, to all of you guys when you're doing your calls. All right. So thank you, Greg. First of all, that's awesome, man. Sure, brother. How, if we're just starting off, how do we approach this best? Because I, I want to take the newbie and then I want to take the veteran agent who has misconceptions or just wants to tweak something to make it work better. Let's start with the newer agent that's looking to probably add this to their arsenal. Where would they start right now in the current market? How would their approach be for for sale by owners? I'm assuming this is for me, not for Andrew, or for Andrew yeah, and then sorry, back to me. Greg. This one's for you, Greg. Apologize. Okay. So the question is, how would you, how, if a new agent was getting into the market, how would they approach uh, in having a conversation with the for sale by owners? You got it. Okay. It's very simple, guys. Look, I've been doing this for 21, almost 22 years. My father's been doing it for 52, almost 53 years. Three, an OG you know, gangster in three different states. And the one thing he's taught me is this. Always be inquisitive, always ask questions and try to figure out their pain points in regards to what is the most big, the bigger, biggest trigger for them. So a lot of folks, when they get into doing for sale by owners, they're like, oh my gosh, I need an appointment. I need an appointment. I need an appointment. Your biggest thing is, is that you have to go out there and make a relationship with the people that you're having a conversation with. Once you have some sort of an, a, a bond between them, then all of a sudden the doors open up wide. My father started in Boulder, Colorado in the 1970s, and he would go out and door knock in the winter, in galoshes, in a suit, and he would do it every single day. And his mindset was twofold. It was, everybody likes me. They just don't know me yet. Right. And number two is his brother had polio. And so he said, I'm a doctor. I have a cure for polio and I'm here to help you. And with that mindset, it shifted from I need the appointments to I'm here to serve you and bring value add benefit to your end desire and goal in your life. And so with asking the right questions, using the Ford concept, which we can talk about later, Tristan and Andrew, if you guys want to get into that. Um, and then being inquisitive and just figuring out what they, where they where their life needs to go. What do they need to sell it themselves? Do they want to sell it themselves? Do they want need to save the money? Do they have to save the money? Kind of where that goes. All of a sudden, once you get inside their brain, you guys just made a friend. I've made friends that I've traveled the world with by doing door knocking and cold calling, just by asking questions. How are you? How are you? Where are you from? Where'd you move from? Would you do it again? Do you like your home? Do you like your neighborhood? What's your favorite part of living here? I mean. You know, family, occupation and recreation and dreams, the whole Ford thing. Um, there's so much to go into on that. It's, it's a great question. Uh, it, it just so many deep answers on that one. But it's just about being a good person and just trying to serve. That's the end all be all. Greg, let, can I dig deeper on that one? Because I, Please. I agree with you. And I'm going to dig deeper by asking you more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So, <laughs> One challenge that I find agents have when they're trying to do either for sale by owners, door knocking, any of the old school methods, right? Cold mm -hmm. calling, any of that, is that they find that it's a challenge because it does take a lot of calls to get that person to finally say, oh yeah, I, I want to listen a little bit more. And I think a lot of people are under the assumption that it's going to, it, it's easier for some people to find the right people over others. Um, they forget that it does require a lot of calls, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you make sure that at the very beginning of that conversation, you're gonna have more success than someone who doesn't have your experience? That is a phenomenal question. Uh, one of the things that I would say is this, is time on task is number one. Uh, so you have to put the time in to get the results out of it. And then once you get on these phone calls and you're really having a conversation with these folks, what I try to do, have you guys, are you guys familiar with the book, Go For No, by any chance? I've seen it, but I've never read it. I would highly recommend you reading it and everybody else. It's a really, really short read or listen, whatever you're into. Yeah, for Go For No. And what they do is they, they talk about kind of taking it away from people. So as soon as I get on a conversation with somebody, I try to talk them out. I know this makes no logical sense. Trust me, this doesn't make sense. But I try to talk them out of selling their own home or try to sell in, selling real estate. So I dig deep into their, in kind of into their mindset on this stuff. So when it comes to the, the amount of calls you're going to have to make, you have to be, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like when, if anyone or you are, or when you were single 
and maybe you're at the bar or the barbecue or something like that. And it's a numbers game, right? You talk to enough people, you're going to get a yes at some point. And that can be yes for coffee, a drink, a dinner, a lunch, whatever it's going to be. But it's the same thing when it comes to getting a listing appointment or working with a buyer. It's consistently and persistently asking the questions that dig deep into what they're looking for. So instead of it being about you, it's going to be all about them. At the end of the day, we are all our own favorite character in our own stories. So Tristan, you're the, you're your favorite character. You got an incredibly great looking shirt on right there with lab coat agents with a great Superman sign in the background. Love it. You know, Andrew, you got a rock and red X sign in the back. And we, I could talk to both of you guys about that because that's something that's personal to you, right? There's a story behind each one of those. So you ask those questions about the people that you're having the conversation with. I used to do between 500 and 750 phone calls a day. Uh, when I was full tilt into doing, you know, hardcore dialing, which I've dialed back a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Um, nearly almost five, almost 600,000 phone calls at this point under my own belt. And it's all about having that conversation. How are you? What's your name? Where'd you move from? Would you do it again? What kind of industry are you in? You know, tell me about your kids. You know, are you guys in sports? And then once that opens up, then all of a sudden it goes, well, you know, maybe we think about maybe renting our property. Oh, fantastic. Where would you guys move? Move. Well, we would move to Tupelo, Mississippi. Great. What's in Tupelo? And then you get the conversation off and running, but it's about build, building the rapport. And the people are just getting into this whole industry and the whole side of doing calls. Do not get discouraged. You have a 97% failure rate right out of the gate. Only 3% of the time, from what I've found, from my numbers, um, you know, you are people that actually want to do something right now, but it's about filling your database, putting people in a consistent contact, you know, sport, and then handling the people that actually want to do something right now. So that's a really long answer. I apologize. No, that's good. That look in, in your case, because you're great with tonality, you've got your dialogue down so that you're actually listening and your response sounds very genuine. Your, your conversion rate is much higher than most people. And you're at like one out of every 30, there's a good possibility, right? right? I think most people that are starting off, it's going to be one out of a hundred because they kind of, they're kind of just fumbling. They don't know what to say. They, they, they're kind of barely getting it. And so I think one thing that you touched on is that not only do you have to be consistent, but you've got to practice at this a lot. You can't just pick up the phone and, and, and be like, oh, I just listed a, a million dollar home today, you know, tomorrow, another one. It's not going <laughs> to happen like that. That's a big misconception too, because I find people is like, oh, you know what? Calling for sale buyers doesn't work. Uh, it's just not for me. Right. Oh, you mean it takes hard work? <laughs> oh, got it. Yeah. Yeah, it does, man. My background was all on telemarketing. So I got hung up a lot. So I got prepared for calling. Right. So I understood that this is going to be a hard gig if I'm going to choose to make this part part of my business. And so go ahead, Greg. Oh, oh, I was going to say, I agree with you 100 percent on this, but it's again, it's going to be a mind shift uh, when it comes to people. Um, I talk to a lot. I have a lot of my good friends are ex-military ex. Uh, I have a good friend of mine. I actually just had lunch with yesterday. He's going to go into special forces. I mean, this guy's a brute. And uh, you know what? These guys and gals. When it comes to hard, they are being shot at, attacked, kidnapped, blown up. I mean, that's a real crummy occupation at times because it's a life-threatening opportunity for, for, for your own life, right? Your family and your significant other and your kids could never see you again. When you pick up the phone call and you say, hi, my name is so-and-so with such-and-such -such brokerage, guys, what's the fear? I mean, the worst thing they're going to do is hang up on you. The second worst thing is they're going to say no. So that two letter word no, or the, the phone going click, we put so much power behind that mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, that we allow it to control our destiny. When in reality, if you wake up in the morning and you pick up these phones and you dial with Red X and you're calling and someone says no to you, you say, you know what? you have a blessed and powerful day. Thank you for your time. And you allow it to slide off your back. Therefore, when you go into these, into these calls, there's no way you can lose because every single no is a one step closer to a yes. And I thought that was cliche when my dad told me that, but I'll tell you one thing, if, 
it, when you guys read the book, go for no, you'll understand what I'm talking about in regards to kind of how this correlates. But if you don't stop, you'll never fail. Think about Mike Tyson. Think about, you know, Michael Phelps. Think about all these like iconic individuals, male or female in sports. Now, if Michael Phelps didn't stop, he would not have won 23 gold medals, 23 gold medals. You guys can do the exact same thing with doing these calls for sale by owners and everything else that Red X provides and so on and so forth. But a lot of us, unfortunately, we get disheartened because of the fact that we hear the word no, or I'm not interested, or we get hung up on and we think that's that's the end of the story. When in reality, that's just somebody having a bad day. There's nothing wrong with that. They just aren't interested in what you have to offer at that point. It's like when you walk into a supermarket, and you walk past the bread aisle. It's not like you're rejecting the bread. You just don't want the bread right now. You might get it tomorrow. It's just it's just a mindset shift. That's all I have to say. Uh, dude, I agree 100%. You see a lot of people just quit and be like, this isn't for me. Because yeah. they just can never make that full shift. There are two great questions. One of them's from a fan of yours. But I'm going go oh, to go. Uh, Carly, Carly Guzzi. Oh, Carl Guzzi. I'm sorry, Carl. I messed up that whole thing. <laughs> Hey, Carl, what's up, dude? He's a fan of yours. Uh, but I'm going to go to Kathy first. She has a great question. It was first. She says, um, this is where my downfall is. How do you follow up again and again and again? I don't know what to say that next time or, or like when they get them on the phone again. How do you keep that going? Uh, it's really simple, Kathy. So the, the script is this. It's like, hey, Kathy, Greg McDaniel, uh, do you remember talking with me? And then you just stay silent and let them answer because they're not going to remember talking to you or you keep notes in your CRM so and, <laughs> um, and uh, my, my, my good friend, Ashley Chapman, she's out of San Diego. She's a 25 year old baller. You guys got to have her on your show. She just crushes skulls. Dude, connect us, please. I would love that. Consider it done after the show. She's a, she made $530,000 by doing cold calls and flips last year. I mean, the girl crushed uh, and that's her script. And I'm not going to take credit for it, but she says, Hey, this is Ashley. Do you remember talking to me? And every single time people say no, or you can go with something like, Hey, Kathy, Greg McDaniel, uh, blah, 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 you know, reality. Hey, I'm calling really quickly. You and I spoke back on blank date. Um, do you remember our conversation when you were, when you and I were talking about yada, yada, cause you're reading off of your notes. And one of the biggest things when it comes to having these calls on a consistent basis is you set a reminder in your calendar and in your CRM to make that follow-up call, but you also keep the notes in there so you can go back, go back and reference it. And then you'll never run out of things to talk about. I mean, I do a lot of, I do a lot of stutters, stammers, ums, and ms. So I'm like, Hey, um, <coughs> I'm so sorry, man, <coughs> Andrew, uh, this is Greg McDaniel with EXP Realty. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> something good. just got in my throat i don't know what it is <clears throat> you and i spoke uh, about two weeks ago and uh you said that you were still you're gonna be selling your home is that correct on your own yeah. and so it breaks up so it's, uh, they're pattern interrupters so it's it's not a, it's not so scripted but you're like hmm huh hmm yeah and you just kind of run with it. Like you're acting as if you were, you didn't do this for the 10,000th time in one day as, and <laughs> you, you, and tell people, Hey, you know what, Tristan, I got to tell you, man, I, <sighs> I'm pretty nervous doing this. I, I don't do a lot of calls. <laughs> That's good, dude. I love that one. <laughs> and all of a sudden it takes all the dog, all the fight out of the dog. And so when it comes to what you have to say, it's, asking about the Ford. So Ford is family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. And now you can, you know, take away the dreams and go with a G for, so frog, it could be goals. Um, but this is a great way. Uh, if you're, you know, single, or if you're with your in-laws, or if you're working with clients, you can ask questions about any one of those far, four different parts and any different uh, format. It doesn't have to be, you know, you know, family op occupation, recreation, and dreams. It can be in any way, shape, or form that you want it. But it allows to it allows you to draw them out of their shell, allow them to open up and feel confident around you. Once they feel confident and comfortable, then at that point they will start to 
disclosing things to you that you could never have gotten if you just went straight scripted. Now, there could be a lot of people that disagree with me, and that's totally fine. I'd love to have a discussion offline with anybody who wants, wants to talk about this, but that's what's worked really well for me. And I love the fact that Tristan, you laughed your rear end off in regards to, you know. That was awesome, dude. I love it. I, I don't think I, I've done that purposefully, but by accident, and you're right, it actually does work. It really it does. Makes, it makes total. I also love the one where, where you're like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm actually really nervous about this call. So yeah. You're putting it up front, and most people are going to be like, "Yeah, you know what? Just go ahead. Yeah, just spill that call. Tell me what is it." So. Dude, when I so with my beers and calls, I gotten I got my hand slapped really hard by my legal department in my past brokerage because in California I was kind of a a wackadoodle and I didn't understand the legal ease in regards <laughs> to doing live calls. Let's put it that way. And so I got called out on doing recorded live calls, and so they they made me do a disclaimer in the beginning of my calls. And yep. so I do, hey, this is Greg McDaniel with EXP Realty. I'm doing a couple of calls from my office live uh, for training and prospecting here in the, op in the office area. Um, I've got a quick question for you. And so once I tell them they're, they're being recorded for live training purposes, it's, well, I know this is a, this is a family show, so we'll keep it clean. Uh, but they, it takes all the uh, the BS out of their language and it makes them everybody very, very nice. And it's the humility. <laughs> Dude, oh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> the transparency, people just love the fact like, I'm just hustling, man. I just need to make a dollar. Like I'm, I'm doing everything I can to help my family. I put food in the table, shirts on my kids' backs, you know, you know, how, you know, would you be willing to talk with me for five seconds? Dude, you need your own show, Greg. That would be <laughs> Watching that live, it reminds me of The Office, you know, the, 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 show, the Office. <laughs> Like you making the calls and then you after side and like, man, that was a really hard call. I was like, I don't even know what they were thinking. Dude, that'd be, I'd watch that. Dude, you got to come up, you go, follow me on Facebook, brother. You'll see I'm me do my beers man. and calls. Where, where are you located? I'm in, right now, I am physically seated in San Francisco, California. Uh, but I work predominantly in the East Bay. So Walnut Creek, Concord, Danville, oh, Alamo, nice. that, kind of, that kind of hood. Um. But I had a, a, when it comes to funny shows, I mean, you, and here's the thing, when you do the calls, have fun, don't make fun, but have fun with the people that you're having calls with. I had an older gentleman and my bet, one of my best friends la still laughs about this every single time. And he's an old crotchety gentleman. And he was like, what are you doing calling me? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just trying to see if you want to sell. I don't want to talk to you. I said, I, I like talking to you. And he's like, he's like, get, he's like, get off the phone. I said, oh, we should have a hang up contest. Okay. Who's going to go first? Go. <laughs> and I hear him breathing and I'm like, you're still here. He's like, get away from me. And I'm like, okay, sir. Sorry. <laughs> have a, have a blessed day. And the reason why I tell that story is because it, it, it's about enjoying what you're doing. And when you don't take yourself so seriously, the people won't take you, you the people won't feel the stress on your side. The for sale by owners, they're already under stress. I mean, they're, they're going through a big transformation in life, right? And so if you can bring some levity to it and bring a little bit of joy, maybe even make them smile, you know, maybe connect them with someone that you know that could help value add, value add benefit to, 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 to their life. Even if you don't get a deal out of it, maybe you can even ask for a couple of referrals. You have to be an open book on everything that you do and just be, guys, my name is Tristan. I'm with so and such and such real estate, and I'm here to serve you. And I understand you have a home for sale by owner. Help me understand how I can bring the biggest value add to you. And then let them talk. Silence is the biggest and best negotiator on God's green earth. If you just shut the blank up after asking a question and let them fidget because a brain can't take silence more than three and a half seconds. Your brain will start to kick in an answer because they it, it, silence is the, this is so awkward for so many people. If you look at blind dates, why do you think blind dates go so badly? Because it's like silence, silence, silence. And then it's an awkward conversation. But if you allow, if you know where you're going with it and you know how to direct these folks through this process, if you say, Tristan, my name is Greg McDaniel with EXP Realty. You're selling your home on your uh, by yourself. Is that correct? Yes. Fantastic. And here's the script behind that. No matter what you guys ask when you when you call for sale by owner, 
your script is this. It's so freaking simple. It's like, you know what? And here's the script. You know what? That's exactly why I'm calling. That's the entire script because of it. Yes. I'm trying to sell it on my own or I might want to use an agent. Oh, fantastic. That's exactly why I'm calling. And then you dive into the different you know, questions and conversations you have on the other side with them. And then you just rock out and again, look for the value add. You don't always have to get the lead, but as long as you can create a relationship and a conversation and get follow-up information from them, your job is done there, my friends. Dude, I love that. I just put up your podcast with Red X there on the chat. So oh, thanks, man. Follow, put it there. All right, let's get to Carl, which I butchered your name, Carl. I'm sorry, but <laughs> here's the question. I'm pretty direct and don't buy into the FISBO BS. And that's why I don't call FISBOs. I'm trying to get my mindset into calling them, but I have a hard time even starting. Now, I cold call at least 500 calls daily. So I'm not nice. afraid of the phone, but I know I should be calling FISBOs. What would you advise? Thanks, Greg. I love your podcast. Hey, Carl. Much love, brother. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> You know, one of the things that I would recommend is that, so the way from what, you know, we were just read on your question is that your mindset is already in a negative mindset. You're already saying that you can't achieve this or they don't want to talk to you. You have to shift that mindset and go back to, you know what, I'm here to help bless and prosper every single human I come in contact with mm -hmm. so that when I have an opportunity to speak with somebody, it is an amazing opportunity to say, how are you, brother? How are you, sister? You know, how can I bring value to your life? And once you shift that mindset, you starting is never going to be an issue again. My, uh, my father always laughed at me. He said, Greg, you know what the biggest problem with door knocking? And I said, um, door knocking? He said, no, it's your car door. That's your hardest door you'll ever get past is your car door. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why I say that is that with your first phone call or getting out of your car to go door knocking, anything along those lines, just getting out of your own way. These people... They want, need, and desire your professionalism. You have to understand that you are a doctor, you're a surgeon, you're an anesthesiologist, you are a person of professionalism, and they are looking for advice and help because they could be a doctor, an anesthesiologist. They could be someone highly skilled, but they don't buy and sell real estate every single day. You do. So once you understand your value add to their life, now it's a whole different game, game right? Because it's no longer like you're begging for their business. You're saying, look, brother, look, sister, I know what I'm doing. My team and I will support you. We will get this done for you. You just need to trust me a little bit. And you come in with us, you know, being assertive and professional with systems, with timelines, with staff, with, you know, something they can stand on. Even if you're a single agent, guys, you can do this as a single agent. Your receptionist at your office is part of your staff. Your Yusquo, your attorney, um, you know, Red X, you know, Lab Coat, all these people you can lean on because you, if they're like, well, I'm going to be moving to Tallahassee, fantastic. I got a great group called Lab Coat Agents on on Facebook, biggest group out there. Um, I, I can reach out to eight thousand, tens of thousands of agents, if not more. I can get to the best agent in the area. Would that be helpful for you? All of a sudden, you just brought value. So don't start, don't, don't keep thinking small, my friend. Think much broader. You are much bigger than you can ever imagine. And it just takes that small shift of a mindset. And all of a sudden, you went from peasant to king. And the people will respond to you. <laughs> Dude, that was good. Peasant to king. And Carl, <laughs> just so you know, that is something that most agents struggle with so it's not it's not unique to you yeah. so i really appreciate that question very, very question. relevant question and that mindset dude you said something here that i think i want to re rephrase it's your words though the key sure. is to believe in yourself first i think that's that's really the key because if you're not believing in yourself when you're making these calls why the hell are people you're calling going to believe in you dude uh, to be real real clear with everybody who's listening and watching uh, back in 2008, I went through foreclosure and bankruptcy. I went down to $35 to my name, and that is not a joke. I lost my houses. I lost my cars. <laughs> the stinking girl I was dating told me I didn't make enough money for her. And uh, she she went along her way because she was she's a challenging <laughs> human, let's put it that way. Um, and uh, when I when I was laying there in bed and I was freaking out, 
about kind of where I was going to go, how I was going to do it. I had, dude, I failed out of college after two years, you know, barely got out of high school. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Am I going to work at Walmart? Am I going to be a greeter? Am I going to do something else? And I'm not talking smack about that. I'm just saying like, these are my mental thoughts going through my head. And I said, you know what? I'm going to stand up and I'm, I'm going to fight. I'm not going to let this freaking beat me. And so I work seven days a week, 365 days a year. I took Christmas and New Year's off. It's only two days a year I took off. I hated Thanksgiving, so I never took that one off. Um, but I, I don't know. It's just a thing with me. I'm, but you know what? I, I just went out there and I just ground. I ground hard and I never looked back. And so maybe some of you guys need to do that right now. And maybe some of you don't. But the mindset shift is what I'm talking about is that if you're in a position, if you're back against the wall and you're going to, you're like, oh my gosh, should I call these for sale by owners? Like, is this who I should call? Why shouldn't you call them? They have a want, a need, and a desire to, to, to part with a piece of real estate. All you have to do is show them that you have more value than what they're trying to bring on their own. So why shouldn't you call them? There's no reason to say no to this. There's no reason. There's a gal that I, she, she cracked me up. She was a young Asian gal when I, when I first started training her, training her about seven years ago. She has balls the size of like, I don't know how big, just the giant biggest things you can possibly imagine. She showed up to a uh, seller's house for four and a half million dollars on Christmas morning going, I want to help you sell this house. And the guy goes, if you're going to show up at my house on Christmas morning and talk about selling my home, you're the agent I want. So persistently and consistently show up guys for sale by owners. They are here. Red X has the data. They will give you the leads you have to call. All you have to do is sit your pretty re little rear end down into a seat, make the dials, get the follow-ups, get the, get the leads, get the contacts, get the con then get the deals done and signed. It's, it's extraordinarily simple. All you have to do is just take action. Dude. I mean, I love it. I love that. You said if your back's against the wall, maybe you just need to work. <laughs> maybe you need to work a little bit harder. Right. Are yeah. we, are we just like living in a world where that's like blasphemy sometimes I get, <laughs> I, it's so absurd to hear that people are like, no, no, you got to relax. You got to, I'm like, whoa. Work life, work life value. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no. Is that, dude, if, if you're in it to freaking win at the highest level, your so, world's going to look upside down for a while. It, it's it's going to look really weird. And here's the funny thing. Everybody wants to be a lion or a lioness. We're not being sexist here. Um, but I'll tell you one thing. When, when you want to be a lion or a lioness, until you have to do what a lion and a lioness does to eat. And that means hunting shit down and killing it, AKA getting a listing, working with a buyer on the weekends on Saturday at five, when your spouse is telling you to come home for dinner with the kids, but you got to crush skulls and you can never apologize for it. So if you want to be the lion or lioness, you got to step up the plate and the first way to do it, easiest way to do it, lowest hanging fruit, in my opinion, are for sale by owners and for rent by owners mm -hmm. and never apologize for your work ethic ever yes yeah dude all freaking day thank you i appreciate you Greg. <laughs> i appreciate you guys and i mean there's so many fun cool people i see all the chats coming in on the on the right hand side here um i mean maybe and tristan this is your show i i, I just want to kind of throw it out there. i mean what are some people what are, what are you seeing on, on on your platform what are people asking for what are they interested in I mean, well, I mean, the, the biggest challenge that most people find is there's um, they can't relate the hard work to success in for sale by owners. And for some reason, there's a there's a there's a disconnect. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you addressed it at the very beginning, which is you got to make the calls. Right. And you have to have the experience and then you have to have the confidence. And and unfortunately, those things just don't align for a lot of people, right? Yeah. I mean, and here's the thing. When it comes to experience, ladies and gentlemen, please don't misunderstand me when I say you need the experience. And I, Tr Tristan said it much better than I, I, I did, uh, than I will uh, in a second. But 
even if you are, this is day one for you in real estate and you want to achieve a goal, go after it, hunt it down, be that lion, be that lioness and be honest, be transparent, be real, be truthful and say, you know what, guys, this is my first day of doing calls uh, out uh, to for sale by owners. And I am extremely nervous right now calling you. And I apologize if, if I stumble, uh, but I'm just trying to figure out if you guys are you know, thinking of selling, you can go into a whole different litany of questions there. But once you take that barrier down and you're real with people on every level of your life, all of a sudden everything becomes so much easier. No, there's no more cloak and dagger. There's no more, you know, fog and mirrors. It's just, you going like, dude, I am freaking out right now because I think you're going to tell me to go F myself. Right. And once they, no, we would never say that to you. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. By the way, since having the phone, have you thought about selling? <laughs> well, dude, the tonality you've, you've mastered. So that's cool to hear, but some of the people barely starting off, aren't going to have that. Kathy asks another great question. Sure. What do you do with rent by owners is there a different approach or what's your take yeah for so for rent by owners is a hugely is a probably one of the biggest opportunities you can have out there when you're doing cold calls and here's the reason why because you're gonna have three opportunities to build a relationship with somebody so when i go out and do for rent by owners i'm talking to them and i'm asking them and this is you're not gonna make a lot of money on this first one but you know let, let, actually, do, who wants to role play tristan you want to role play with me yeah, or let's andrew? Go. Okay, yeah, tristan. wait andrew hasn't had a chance andrew you want right. to jump in on let's this? Let's do it. Buddy? Yeah, right. let's do it. Okay, let's do this. So, hi, is this Andrew? Yeah, this is Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Um, uh, you're, I'm looking for the owner of One Two Three Main Street. Did I get the right number? Uh, yeah, that's that's my property. Oh, fantastic, man! That means I didn't have Fat Finger Mondays. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm 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 calling around. <laughs> Tristan's dying right now. <laughs> um, you know, hey, I'm calling around really, really quickly, and I see that you have your property uh, for rent by owner. Did, did you get that property rented? Uh, I've got a few tenants looking at it uh, this afternoon, actually. So we're working on it. Oh, fantastic. That, 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 <laughs> that's exactly what I'm actually calling. Um, so the reason why I asked that question is, is to the fact that, you know, have you ever thought about maybe selling that property? Because I have, um, I'm obviously a very aggressive marketer. That's why we're talking on the phone right now, right? Um, have you ever thought about selling it? If I can get a price that would make sense for you? I mean, I, I have it because it cash flows so well. So I haven't given, I haven't given selling it much thought. No. Nice. Okay. So you haven't given it much thought of selling. How long have you owned it? About 10 years. Okay. So your how, how's your depreciation schedule looking? Has that de depreciated at all? Or, I mean, or do, would you like to maybe buy another property with the proceeds and do a 1031 exchange, roll your equity out into another one and start your depreciation schedule over? Well, it was a house I inherited from a family member, uh, so I own it outright. Like I said, I cash flow pretty well, and I've already uh, I've already used that to buy a few other properties. I'm, I'm a big renter, so you're a big renter. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that you want to keep that property because it, because it, it's making it's, it's a good nest egg, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fantastic. If I was to drop a bag of cash in front of you right now, hypothetically, what would that number look like? Uh, it would have to be in the uh, probably in the high eight hundreds. High eight hundreds. Okay. Yeah. And you're, you're a four, three, right? Yeah. Okay. High eight hundreds. You know what? That might actually be doable. I meet a lot of people that are actually interested in buying properties with tenants in them. Um, otherwise, you know, since you have so much equity in that property, have you ever considered buying additional properties? I know you said you have done it in the past, but I mean, would you be open to buying it? Maybe another one or two this year? Yeah. Yeah. I would, I'm, I'm always open to buying new properties. Uh, the more, the merrier. So yeah. sweet. What do you guys, what do you, what are you looking for? Are you looking for single family condos, townhouses, multifamily? What, what's kind of your flavor? Uh, typically townhouses, preferably in a, you know, a college university setting. Okay. Do you, would you would prefer HOA or no HOA? No HOA. Okay. Not a problem. Um, and when, if we were to be able to, you know, get this rock and roll for you, what would be the time frame that you'd want to be purchasing another property? Well, like I said, I, I'm so comfortable where I'm at. I haven't given it much thought. Um, so, you know, maybe I, I, I have to think about it. Maybe six months down the road, I'd be open to something, but my plate's pretty full. So, yeah, plates are full all over the place right now. I mean, I hear you on that one. Let's do this. I know you're a busy guy. You got a lot going on. Why don't, uh, what, what, what's your, uh, what's your best email just in case? Uh, 
Andrew Swenson at renters.com. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> it's a good one, Andrew. It's a good one. Thanks. Yeah, yeah I original. like that. So, there, so there's a script there that I dropped in uh, on you guys at the very end there. And it was, hey, Andrew, what's your, e- what's your best email address just in case? Mm. And that's a script right there. Because a lot of people's mindset goes to the world's worst apocalyptic opportunity in life. So it could be aliens, could be nuclear attack, it could be oh, a pandemic, um, <laughs> could be anything that goes on in life. But it, when you use the words, Andrew, what's your best email or best your, your best contact information just in case? Mm. And then you just shut up. And the reason why this works so well with for rent by owners or for sale by owners is because it doesn't matter who they are. They all put their legs, their pants on one leg at a time. They all have fears. They all have dreams. They have goals. They have aspirations. They have people in their lives that are pushing them in different directions and they don't want anything that bad to happen to them. So as long as you're a lifeline to those individuals through this conversation, people will open up and have a, and have a conversation. Now, Andrew, did, did you feel like I was pushing you at all or not in that conversation? No, I, I thought that you, you, you kind of matched where I was at, right? You didn't, you didn't push for the sale. You, you got the, you kind of got the vibe I was putting off of like, Hey, I'm, I'm a, I'm a happy renter, right? I'm a happy, uh, you know, rental owner. Um, I don't really want to sell. And you responded to that by saying, well, sounds like you like owning properties and renting properties. Let's see what we can do for you in, in that, you know, so. Yeah. So the reason why for rent by owners, and I'm going to get back to that question is this, is that the three opportunities are potentially help them rent the property. Mm-hmm. Now that is a relationship building moment right there. You can help them sell the property to an investor if they like, you know, if they want to offload it, or you can help them buy another property. So the three different conversations you have there just brings more credibility to you as an agent doing the calls with Red X in that scenario. Right. So, yeah, that's why I like them so much. I love that. Yeah. And we've had a lot of agents find success just kind of cold calling for rent by owners and finding success, building those relationships and establishing relationships with those investors is a huge one because they'll unload one property, help them buy three more. They can double end some of those transactions and it's, and it's huge. So, Oh, it's huge. Did I feel like for rent by owners are are a little bit more of an easier conversation to have. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so would you suggest if they're going to pick between for rent by owners and for sale by owners that they start maybe with for rent by owners or just dive into for sale by owners? It's a double-edged sword. I'll be honest with you on that, Tristan. Um, I mean, it's very popular to do for sale by owners because everyone talks about it. And when Red X came to me a couple of years ago and they said, hey, we have this whole new thing called for rent by owners. Do you want to call them? And I said, well, what in the blank am I going to say to these people? And so if you don't know what to say, remember, you can help them rent it. You can help them buy another property. You can help them sell it. So there's three prongs to that, to, to that opportunity. Uh, for sale by owners, there's a want, need, and desire for, the, for those individuals. You'd have to understand where the pain point is for them. Why are they trying to sell it by owner? What is their motivation? When would they want to move? What's that net goal they're trying to achieve financially? I mean, are they moving in town or out of town? Tell me the best things you love about your, your about the property that you're in right now. What was your last experience with the agent that you may or may not have used? Who was the last agent that you used? There's so many questions to be asked um, that I would say, if you want to just go blindly into it, go into for sale by owners and just ask every stinking question you possibly can come up with in your mind about them. Be curious, but also be courteous of their time and ask them, Hey, you know, uh, Andrew, I I have, uh, I know, I know you're a busy guy. Do you have five minutes? I can talk with you about your property. I'll keep it to five minutes. I'll give you a countdown at one minute before, before I let you go. Would that be fair? Sure. That's where I would start. Dude, easy. I love that. All right, dude, top of the hour. It was so fun talking to you, Greg. Very, very informative, fun, easy, easy to talk to. Great. And <laughs> dude, what a great guest, Andrew. Great job on, on picking Greg. Everyone here loved him. So- yeah, we love Greg at Red X. He's, he's great and he's fun and, you know. And I, like didn't fans, even, so. I didn't even cuss one time. Dude, no, you did great there. I saw you I got close a couple times, but. <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> 
Anyone who knows me knows that I cuss quite a bit. And I told Andrew and I told Tristan that I would keep it very, very clean for their programs today. And I, I just really love and appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for your time and uh, allowing me onto your platforms today. Thanks, man. Thanks for being on. And everyone, please follow Greg on Facebook. Check out the podcast with Red X. And if you're interested in using Red X for for sale by owners or for rent by owners, we put up the link there as well. This is recorded. It'll go up on our YouTube channel. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Have an awesome day. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Tristan. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs>